Hi, this is Heidi. Episode 92, Discomfort Tolerance. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. How are you? Happy May or end of May. Happy end of the school year. Happy beginning of summer. Well, not officially, but it's warming up here in Boston. And so I hope it's warm where you are. It's fun to think of what the summer will bring. Knowing a year ago, we were all in such uncertainty and well, like COVID limbo. Before I go into today's topic, discomfort, which I am excited to talk about, I want you to know I'm putting the final touches on an exclusive virtual country club of sorts for mothers of teenagers to gather, a place where I can teach and coach more women who then in turn can be amazing examples to their families. I got off a call with a client last week. Her transformation in just a few weeks is amazing. And I thought every woman needs these tools. This is just gold. I'll have the group open for my founding members very soon. So make sure you're on my email list or in my free Facebook group, Lose Weight and Gain Confidence with Heidi. So you can join and lock in the pre-launch lowest rates. More info to come soon. Just keep watching and DM me if you don't get emails. Also, maybe check those promotion or spam folders. Okay, creating this program has given me more experience in the topic I want to cover today discomfort tolerance, or in other words, our ability to feel uncomfortable feelings in our bodies, to allow them, not put them away or avoid activities that will trigger thoughts and these emotions. Brooke Castillo says discomfort is the currency of success. I regularly go to the gym Orange Theory, where they have three different pace type categories on the treadmills. Everyone sets their own speed, but we all have a base pace, then a higher push pace where they tell us you want to feel uncomfortable. And then there's an all out pace and the coaches say you want to be very uncomfortable here. Usually we can only run at that pace for like 30 or 45 seconds. The pace or speed isn't what's important, but the feeling of really pushing ourselves, the uncomfortable feeling we feel for those few seconds is what increases our overall endurance and heart health and gets us closer to our health goals. So just like going to the gym and doing what keeps me at the same heart rate isn't where I'm going to experience growth. Staying in my comfort level in life will keep me comfortable and steady. And steady feels good, y'all. I remember very vividly, as I was thinking about starting my own business, I would question myself. So my life is very, very comfortable. Why am I doing this? I can really just coast along for the next 50 years. Of course, obstacles would come in life and challenges with family, as well as successes. But otherwise, why not just stay super comfortable? I knew for me to really shine my light, for me to build something from nothing, to start a podcast, telling people I was a life coach, creating a vehicle to help so many people feel the changes I felt. I knew I needed to feel a lot of discomfort. I still remember where I was. I was sitting in a hotel room in Utah on my birthday. iTunes had just accepted and listed this podcast. I had the Facebook and email announcements ready to push to the world, and I wanted to throw up, like really throw up. I texted a few friends who I knew that they knew how close I was. I had lots of vomit emojis in the text, and I knew I had to feel it and push through it to get to the other side, to grow. Now, being willing to feel that discomfort which I still feel to some degree every week, is the price I've been willing to pay to get to 92 episodes with so many more to come. And feeling comfortable with it has opened the doors for more discomfort, which has brought along with it so much more joy and pride and confidence than I ever would have felt without doing these vulnerable things. 
Now, one of the ways I was able to push through that and feel that discomfort was because of a few things I did. First, I asked, what's the worst to happen here? Well, some people won't like my podcast and some will be critical. I imagined that and realized I could handle that. I realized it's really okay. And I understood, yes, the criticism might sting, but it isn't about me. There will always be critics, and usually that means you're sharing really important information. Okay, second, I just told myself I can do it. This is hard, and that's okay. I didn't pretend it wasn't hard, and I didn't resist the emotions. I also didn't make it worse than it was. It's just a podcast. I didn't exaggerate or magnify its significance beyond what it was. I managed my mind drama. Now, third, I pictured and visualized women I want to be like, and they're women who confidently shine their light to the world and they stand grounded and firm in their own awesomeness and also in their own flaws and growth. I pictured this discomfort being almost like a magnet to other confident women to pull me into their orbit and help me get where I want to go. And fourth, I knew I just had to start somewhere and I didn't have to be perfect. I didn't want that. I knew I had to start and getting going with lots of discomfort would mean I was on the right road. Y'all, this discomfort, which I said I still feel each week as I vulnerably create value to put out into the world, this is the price I pay to get emails and text messages and clients paying me money, real money, and more telling me how much these tools are changing relationships in their lives, how much they're losing weight, how they're calmly handling stressful situations with their families. It's worth it. And I've grown tremendously in my tolerance and it hasn't killed me. Well, it hasn't so far. There are several other discomforts I want to speak to. It's not just growing a business. Our life can become so much bigger and more anchored when we can handle the discomfort of telling a vendor you didn't choose their bid or telling a family member you can't attend the event or apologizing in person or having a difficult conversation or discussing money and a family estate when everyone has different opinions. If we want our self-confidence, our self-esteem, and our life to grow, we need to be able to handle these discomforts. So I'm going to go through several examples here, and I want you to see discomfort tolerance is more than just feeling your own heart racing. It's also one of the foundation blocks to creating solid, trusting, and integrity-filled relationships in your life. First, let's remember a few basics. We only create the discomfort we feel in our bodies. We do not create the emotions someone else is feeling. Now, of course, as humans, we know there are things we can say and do that will most likely be interpreted in certain ways by others. We want to be considerate of others, but we don't make them feel rejected if we say no. Imagine you're the hiring manager and you interview four people and you hire one person. It's normal human nature to not look forward to the conversation where you tell the three people they aren't being offered the job. We want to be humans who are considerate of how it feels to be let down. We want to be humans who don't like rejection. But we also want to be humans who can have these conversations and can express what we want and don't want. We want to hire the person best fit for the job. It doesn't benefit you or the other three people if you just string them along or maybe you create three other jobs for them just because you're afraid of hurting their feelings or disappointing them, the end result will always be you disappointing yourself. Several years ago, we finished our basement and I talked to multiple contractors and I got bids from several of them. I loved the one we picked and I had to tell the others we weren't going with their bid. I'm so glad I had the ability to handle those short, uncomfortable conversations because we got what we wanted. And even with that vendor, I had to manage my expectations. I had to manage his work, say no to one thing he proposed that we didn't want him to do. My ability to do that saved us lots of money in one area of the project, and I was able to honor and respect his work as well as honor and respect what we wanted and how we wanted to spend our money. By not managing his emotions, 
which I have no control over anyway, I was able to stay confident and anchored in my own desires. And I'd use them again and I'd recommend him to others. So just remember, when we fear disappointing someone else, we always end up disappointing ourselves, which sends a subliminal message to ourselves that our desires don't matter. We devalue what's most important to ourselves and we spend time in someone else's lane and we have no idea if they're disappointed or maybe happy or whatever. Also, when we show up in our truth, don't blame others, but take responsibility for our choices and our emotions. We project confidence that everyone else in the story will be able to handle the mature emotions like discomfort as well. We aren't subconsciously reflecting that they aren't mature enough to handle rejection or anything else. Notice the difference you feel when someone gives you the straight truth with no people-pleasing drama versus beating around the bush or asking your mother to convey the news or just ghosting you or going silent. That difference is confidence. It's confidence that you're mature enough to manage your emotions and it's the other person saying, I respect and value our relationship enough to have these type of conversations. Recently, I've been having more open and more somewhat maybe uncomfortable conversations with my parents about their futures, their estate, their desires, their money, and more. Some people can't have these conversations without letting unreasonable discomfort exist. Without the confidence to have these conversations, I wouldn't know what my parents want and I wouldn't be able to be a resource to help them because we're all able to handle these mature conversations and also acknowledge the emotion that is involved in them. We're showing mutual respect and love and we're able to communicate desires, wants, and more that would be harder to do much later. This discomfort is actually pulling us closer and creating connection. I'm not afraid to feel the discomfort. I know I'm creating it and I've gotten good at feeling it in my body. I know I feel it in my arms and my chest, sometimes in my stomach. It's okay. A few moments of discomfort feel much better than a lifetime of regret, disappointment, and insecurity. If discomfort is hard for you, well, it means you're human. So good job. I was able to say no better when I learned a few tips. First, I got good at saying small no's. And I watched other people I admire say no with class and ease. I really admired and saw the confidence it took. And I wanted to be like that. So watch people in real life. Notice that no one is hurt. And more are usually better off with an honest no thank you. Get practiced at those small no's. If you're asked to give to a charity when you're checking out, I'll frequently say, not today, no thank you. Of course, sometimes I say yes. But when my desire then is to say no, I remind myself I do give a lot and I want to give with a full heart. If someone emails you or texts and you know your answer is no for whatever reason, don't delay. Send the kind and short response as soon as you can. This shows consideration and respect to this other person. And then it's off your mind. You won't be dreading the future discomfort. Recently, one of my children needed to convey a message they thought would be uncomfortable, and I could see them delaying. it. I told them, just do it. Get it over with then you won't have to deal with the anxiety of that discomfort anticipation. The more practice you get at calling to dispute a charge for something or getting a price corrected or telling the coach your child can't come to the game you know they're really needed at, the more strength you'll have for the more serious, uncomfortable conversations. We build stronger relationships with the most important people in our lives when we're willing to openly discuss anything And in these situations, I found when we approach them with questions, not assumptions, when we're willing to listen and also be confident in our own desires, we learn so much more. We're calmer and our connections grow exponentially stronger. I've healed relationships by having uncomfortable apology conversations because I wanted to be the type of person who could say, I'm sorry, 
or create a safe space for the other person to say, I'm sorry. I knew discomfort would be a small price to pay for vulnerability and respect for a deeper connection in those relationships. That type of discomfort has been a beautiful gift to myself and those around me. In those more consequential situations, as I thought about how I handled them, and even in the less consequential, uncomfortable conversations, I'm guided by the question I ask myself all the time, who do I want to be? Do I want to be the person who can handle the discomfort of growth in my life, the discomfort of criticism and rejection? Do I want to be someone who confidently knows what I want and also respects what other people can know and want for themselves? Or do I want to run from it and hide? It takes courage. I'm building it every day. I am not perfect at it. I want to hide at times, but I know my growth, my ability to shine, and me not disappointing me is who I want to be. And if I need to feel nauseous every so often to also feel greater joy and happiness and success, then I'm willing to feel it. And there's nothing extra special about me. I have full confidence you can do this too. Okay, that's it for today. If you'd like private personalized coaching to manage your emotions, learn more tools and how to apply them directly in your life, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com. I'm adding clients to a wait list so they can get in on the next open spots. As my membership opens, I will only have a small number of spaces for exclusive, personalized, and private coaching. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family. Not a perfect mother. Your family wants you to be confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.